four things I want to talk about. Number one, the academic achievement gap, specifically between poor and wealthy kids, is the economic and civil rights issue of your generation. And number two, if we can close that gap here in New Orleans, we can close it anywhere in the United States. Number three, we're actually doing it. And lastly, I want to challenge you to get involved personally. This is a graph of what most rational people do when bad things happen. <laughs> this is a graph of you and me. For decades, our children have continued to fall behind their industrialized peers, and we have ignored it. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is a graph of a 2006 study comparing our 15-year-olds to those in the other 30 industrialized nations in the world. We're 25th in math, we're 24th in science. That's tragic. But it's not nearly as tragic as the next slide. There's only one thing we scored first place in, and that's how well we thought we did in math. <laughs> This is the funniest and the most tragic slide in my presentation. You have to laugh. It's comedy. And it is the most tragic thing about our nation today. We are literally telling generations of children, you are number one, and they're going out into a world where they're going to get cramped. It's unfair. It's unjust. It's funny when Albert Einstein says something like this. The only thing that interferes with my learning is my education. But it is devastating when an entire generation of kids says it. That's what they're saying to us. That's what's really happening. This is now an economic issue, though. It's been a civil rights issue for generation. It's now an economic one. From 92 to 2002, we created 6.3 million jobs, the bar on the top of that graph, for kids or, or anyone, in, any adult who finished college, four-year degree. In that same decade, we shed 400,000 jobs for folks who hadn't finished high school. The world is getting flatter, and if you want a ticket to play, you need a college degree. Malcolm X was right, and if he had seen this data, he'd have been more specific. College is the passport. College is a ticket to the flat economy that we must compete in today. Let's look inside the U.S., though, at what's going on. I'm going to show you three slides, New York and two other states. If your slide is orange, you're okay. This is washing out a little bit. But New York is fifth or sixth in the country. There's some orange on the map. There's Massachusetts they have to worry about. Orange on these maps is good. Blue is bad. Let's look at Texas. Mostly, you can barely see there's orange on the southwest. New Mexico is doing worse. Blue is bad. They're, they're about two-thirds of the country. is worse than Texas. Louisiana. You can't see this, but let me tell you what's on this slide. There's not a single orange state on it. You sit in the state with the worst public school system in the country. These are fourth grade English language arts scores. It's worse, don't worry. You sit in New Orleans. Now I'm going to show you a graph with the y-axis representing fourth grade English test scores. If you're at the top of that graph, you are at grade level. The right, the x to y-axis is poverty. From 1999 to 2003, New Orleans has been the lowest performing, about 40% of kids on grade level, and by far the poorest district in this entire country. Something amazing happens, though. As this data animates, and we approach the year 2005, we change the way we think about, chart, about schools in New Orleans. Specifically, we're no longer a school system. We are now a system of schools. The unit of measure in New Orleans these are dots that are animated and moving up to the northeast. In New Orleans, we now care about how each school does. This is the only city in the country where this is happening. The growth that you see from 2003 to the top of 2010 is unprecedented. No school district in the nation has ever, ever grown that fast. Are we there? No. What do our kids deserve? Schools whose dots are off this chart. So we're not done. But I want you to know that you are in the middle of the most incredible experiment and the most successful one in the last generation. It's about public education, and it's about uniting your future and the future of very poor, predominantly children of color in this city. This summer, New Orleans ranked number one. 
as the city where reform was most likely to continue. We should celebrate that. And then we should get right back to work focusing on the most important issue of your generation. You are here at the epicenter of it, and I urge you, I urge you to be a part. Don't waste your time in New Orleans and not plug in to what is happening. It's transformative. And your dot is the kids in New Orleans dot. You must connect them, and you must become a part of it.